Professor Vian van der Plas from the Rigi Universiteit Brussel, Brussels, Belgium, spoke about the evidence related to HMOs and what is known about HMOs so far. During the World Congress of the International Society for Developmental Origins of Health and Disease 2019 in Melbourne, Australia. During his lecture, he emphasized on the significance of breastfeeding during early life, in particular on the role and benefits of HMOs, which are the third largest solid component of breast milk. Breastfeeding has many beneficial effects, including the development of a normal, healthy gut microbiota that has become an important aspect of infants' health. Infants' gut microbiota composition plays a vital role in the development of the immune system and the gastrointestinal tract. In breastfed infants, the gut microbiota is characterized by an abundance of beneficial gut microbiota, such as bifidobacteria. While these bifidobacteria are less abundant in the gut microbiota of infants receiving a typical infant formula based on cow's milk. One of the reasons for these differences in gut microbiome development are the presence of HMOs, which are unique to breast milk. Besides many differences among human milk and cow's milk, HMOs, the third largest solid component of breast milk, are virtually absent in cow's milk, and likewise in a typical infant formula based on it. Summarizing what is known about HMOs in breast milk, Professor Van den Plas said that over 200 HMOs have been identified so far. HMOs can be broadly classified into fucosylated HMOs, non-fucosylated and sialylated HMOs. Non-fucosylated and fucosylated HMOs are neutral in nature and account for about 75% of total HMOs, while sialylated HMOs are acidic in nature. The amount and composition of HMOs differ between women and over the course of lactation, and are mainly dependent on mother's secretor status. Furthermore, the levels of HMO vary geographically and with seasonal changes. Further in his talk, Professor Van den Plas presented the evidence from several clinical studies which showed that infants fed with infant formula supplemented with one or two HMOs, achieved growth parameters, including weight gain, that was similar to feeding infant formula with no HMOs, and so perfectly normal. Speaking about the main mechanisms of HMOs, Professor Van den Plas mentioned that HMOs promote a protective commensal gut microbiota by selectively promoting the growth and metabolic activity of beneficial bifidobacteria. HMOs are anti-adhesive antimicrobials that serve as soluble decoy receptors and prevent pathogen adhesion in the gut, thereby eliminating pathogens and reducing the risk of infections. Discussing about the immunological effects of HMOs, he said that HMOs can bind to cell service receptors present on the epithelial cells and immune cells, and in doing so, HMOs may modulate the neonatal immunity in the infant gut. In addition, HMOs and its metabolic products, such as sialic acid, may play an important role in brain development and cognition. In fact, feeding infant formula with two HMOs shifts the gut microbiota closer to that of breastfed infants. Further, Professor Van den Plas presented first promising clinical benefits of adding two HMOs to infant formula, outside the gastrointestinal tract. Infants fed infant formula with the HMOs 2FL and LNNT had lower incidence of respiratory tract infections, notably bronchitis, and less use of antibiotics and antipyretics, in comparison to control formula without these HMOs. Similarly, to what was seen in healthy infants, infants with cow's milk protein allergy fed with an extensively hydrolyzed formula containing 2FL and LNNT had a similar trend towards a reduced risk of lower respiratory tract infections and a decreased use of antipyretics. Concluding his talk, Professor Van den Plas underlined that the first few months of life of an infant are very crucial for the development of the gut microbiome. The gut microbiome plays an important role in digestion and absorption for the gut-brain crosstalk and immune function. The baby's gut microbiome, in turn, is influenced by many factors, including nutrition and the epigenome. When it comes to infant nutrition, 
breastfeeding and HMOs play an important role.